Hello students, welcome to GSP Tutorial 2. Make sure you have completed Tutorial 1 before proceeding with this tutorial. This is Tutorial 1. This is the tutorial that you completed. So if you are moving right on to Tutorial 2, you already have GSP open. So you can simply go to File, New Sketch. If you closed GSP, you can simply reopen it again by double-clicking on the icon GSP5. All right, let's begin tutorial two. As with all assignments, I would like you to start with the title box. So let's use the text tool. Click on the text tool. You'll notice that the cursor turns into a hand. We're going to click and hold the mouse button and drag a wide box. Let's type in the title, Tutorial 2, Drawing Angles. Please press pause while you type in this title. Let's highlight what we've typed. Let's go down to the bottom of our screen and let's change the font. If it is Times New Roman, please change it away from Times New Roman. If it is Arial font, please change it away from Arial font. For the title, in the tutorial one, we used font size 24. So let's keep things consistent. And we always bold the title and we always underline the title. If I click outside of the text box, it will shrink down. And then if I click on the select arrow, I can move that title to the top and center of our screen. Now, sometimes our text box gets cut off. Now, when I say cut off, sometimes it um, chops up our text onto two lines. So on the title, we never want to have this situation. So it's very easy to adjust the size of a text box. Every text box, when I click on the text box, has a tiny black control point in the bottom right-hand corner. If I were to just click on that and hold my mouse, I can drag out the box so I can make the text fit back onto one line. Let's deselect. The second line is always your name box. So let's go back to the text tool. Let's click and hold and drag a box and let's type in your name. Always start with by, colon, first name, last name, and class. Let's highlight that typing. Let's go to the bottom and take off the bold, take off the underline, give it the italics, and let's reduce the font size to 16. Now it should remember the font that you used in the first text box. Once you set a font once, it will always revert back to that text box, uh, back to that font style until you close the program. So let's deselect. Let's change tools to the selection arrow tool. And let's click on that text box and move it underneath the title. Okay, let's do an initial save for tutorial two. So let's go back up to file, save as. Now in tutorial one, I showed you the one way to save by clicking on this down arrow uh, at the top. But there's another way to save. You can click on computer, double click actually, and then you can look for your student number drive. Okay, so Again, I'm recording this at home, so I don't have access to my Peel Fletcher's Creek number, so I'm just going to save it in my drive here. I would like you to call this file Tutorial 2, and then click Save. So in Tutorial 1, we focused on drawing line segments. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to combine line segments together to draw angles. So let's go to the line tool. 
I would like to draw a diagonal line segment. And then from one of the endpoints, I'd like you to draw another line segment. Now it's very important that in an angle, the two line segments meet at this very special point called the vertex. Now, if I were to not be as accurate with my drawing and did something like this, this is not an angle because the two line segments do not meet at a vertex. They're close, but they don't meet. Now remember, if you make a mistake, you can click on the arrow tool, you can click on anything that you want to get rid of, and then hit the delete key on your keyboard. Now sometimes when you're just getting used to Geometer Sketchpad, you might press the mouse too quickly and then end up with kind of small lines like this as mistakes. That's okay, that happens to everyone. So again, you can click on the selection arrow, and you can click individually on objects that you don't want, or if there are many objects that you don't want, you can simply click and drag a box to surround all the objects you don't want. Now you notice that when I do this, I'm highlighting many objects at the same time. And then I can hit delete and I can get rid of all of them. So I'm going to actually get rid of all of this because I don't need it. Okay. Now, I've drawn an angle. Now, when I think about the types of angles and I inspect this angle, it looks like what is called an acute angle. Now, what I can do is once I've drawn the angle, is I can, with my selection arrow tool, I can click on any point and I can manipulate that angle. So I can make that angle appear much smaller. Now, there's no doubt now that is it is an acute angle. Or I can open the angle up and make it into an obtuse angle. I can also make the line segments much shorter in case I needed to draw many angles on my screen. I can also move the end point, or sorry, the vertex. And I can actually place the vertex on the right side of the angle. There's many things you can do. You can also move the entire angle by dragging a box around the whole angle. And then I can click and move it around. All right, let's change the line thickness. So let's click on the two line segments. Let's go back up to display. Now we learned this in tutorial one. We go down to line style. And like I said, in tutorial one, the default is medium. Now mine is on thick because I just went from tutorial one to tutorial two without closing geometer sketchpad. So I'm actually gonna change it back to medium. No, I changed my mind. I'm going to go back to thick. Kind of like how bold they are. All right, let's deselect. Remember, deselect means clicking on any white area. So let's change the color of the angle. So I'm going to click on the two line segments. And I can go to display, color. And let's use a color I haven't used yet. How about red? Now, if you wanted to change the color of the entire angle, including the points, then what you can do is you can drag a box around the entire angle. You notice how now everything is selected, including the points. And I can go to display, color, and I could change it to purple. All right. So now let's measure this angle. In tutorial one, we measured line segments. So to measure a line segment, it's very easy. We simply click on a line and we go to measure and we go length. But in an angle, we're not concerned about how long the line segments are. We want to measure the angle. Now, if we were in math class, we'd uh, take out a protractor. We place the protractor here near the vertex and we'd measure this angle. But in Geometer Sketchpad, there's a very specific and simple way to measure angles. Now remember, this is called an endpoint. This is also called an endpoint. But this special point 
is called the vertex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label the vertex here. Now you don't have to do that. I'm just going to place this label here so that I always remember. And I'm going to bold it and I'm going to increase the font so that I don't forget. Okay, I'm just going to place this here temporarily. You don't have to type this. All right, so the rule to measure an angle is we go endpoint and then we click on the vertex and then we click on the other endpoint. So it's called the EVE -E rule. Okay. So I'm going to type that in. The EVE -E rule. Endpoint vertex endpoint. Sorry that my screen is jumping around. I have a very sensitive touch mouse. I apologize for that. Okay, so I'm going to re review that. Endpoint, vertex, endpoint. I'm going to go to endpoint, vertex, endpoint. I'm going to go up to measure. And this time, you'll see that length is not available. It's ghosted out. But angle is available. So let me click on angle. The measurement will appear somewhere on the screen, highlighted. I want to grab that measurement and I want to place it inside the mouth of the angle. Now you notice that now the points are labeled. A is an endpoint, B is the vertex, C is the other endpoint. And it labels this uh, angle as well, angle A, B, C. Remember, B is the vertex because it is the point that I clicked on second. Now you notice that the measurement is again measured to the tenths and the hundredths column. So let's review something we learned in tutorial one. Let's deselect first. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to preferences. Now this time we're going to focus on the angles line. Now angles is always measured in degrees, so I don't want to touch this but I do want to change the precision of how I measure angles. So right now it's set to hundredths. I want to change the hundredths to units. Units means the ones column, whole numbers. So let's click on units. I'm not going to touch anything on the distance line and I'm not going to touch anything on the others line. So let's click OK. Now let's see what happens when I measure this again. Now, I'm going to use the endpoint vertex endpoint, the EVE rule, but I'm going to flip the endpoints to show you that it doesn't matter. So I want to click on endpoint, vertex, endpoint. I'm going to go to measure, angle. And you'll see now that the measurement is the same, except I'm only measuring to the units. In other words, the ones column. The label is different because I clicked on the C point first, but it is the same angle. Angle CBA is the same angle as angle ABC. Let's deselect. Now, here's the most interesting part about Geometry Sketchpad. It is what's called a dynamic measurement tool. And what that means is I can click on any point, and as I move it, you'll see that it constantly changes its measurement. So imagine if we were in math class and if I were to draw a new angle, I'd have to take out the protractor again. But in this program, Geometer Sketchpad 5, it is constantly measuring for you. So if I were to ask you to move this angle or manipulate this angle to exactly 55 degrees, just takes a little practice, but you can get it to exactly 55 degrees. Now I'm going to deselect and I'm going to click on my first measurement, the one that has the measurement up to the hundreds column. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to hit delete. I want to get rid of that. I want a nice clean whole number inside the angle here. All right, let's create a small label here. Let's click on the text tool. And I want to drag a box. 
and I'd like to type this little label or conclusion. This is an acute angle, period. I'm going to click on the select tool and I'm going to deselect. I can move this conclusion or this label underneath the angle, beside the angle, or just above the angle. So this concludes tutorial two. So let's go to file, save. Thanks for watching. Bye.